its owner said to them, why are you untying this colt? They answered, the master has need of it. So they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the colt, and helped Jesus to mount. As he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the road. And now, as he was approaching the slope of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for all the mighty deeds that they had seen. They proclaimed, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in earth, glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He said in reply, I tell you, if they keep silent, the stones will cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard the quality of God as something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, and for those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Were you in need of anything? No, no nothing. nothing. They replied. 
He said to them, But no one who has a money bag should take it, and likewise a sack. And one who does not have a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. Namely, he was counted among the wicked. And indeed, what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then they said, Lord, look, there are two swords here. Then he replied, It is enough. Then going out, he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them <clears throat> and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer, and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and temple guards and elders who had come for him, Have you come out? as against a robber with swords and clubs. Day after day I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. But this is your hour, the time for the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around him. And Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, she looked intently at him and said, This man too was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, You too are one of them. But Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted, Assuredly, this man too was with him. But Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, Thou the Son, who is it that struck you? And they reviled him and saying many other things against him. When they came, the council of elders of the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before their Sanhedrin. They said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he replied to them, if I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of God in power. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further need have we for testimony? We have heard it from his own mouth. Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, We found this man stealing our people. He opposed the man in the to Caesar, and maintains that he is the Christ of the king. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. 
Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowds. I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is inciting the people with his teachings throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began and he is to hear. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. And upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at the time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He'd been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him contemptuously and mocked him. But after clothing him in resplendent garb, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, He brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him. Nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore I shall have him flogged, and then release him. But all together they shouted out, Away with this man, release Barabbas to us. Now Barabbas had been in prison for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus, but they continued their shouting. Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been imprisoned for rebellion and murder, for whom they asked. And he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nurse. At that time, people will say to the mountains, fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, He saved others, let him save himself. He is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of Jews, save yourself. Above him, there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, 
and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down in the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. what had happened, glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who followed him from Galilee, and saw these events. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who, though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he'd taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind. And when they had seen the tomb and the way in which his body was laid in it, they returned and prepared spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's scriptures have taken us from Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem to his last meal with his disciples and then through his passion to his death on the cross. In the midst of all this drama is Jesus, he who has chosen to be the suffering servant, he who has chosen to be the suffering servant for our salvation. St. Paul reminded us that Jesus did not regard equality with God something to hold on to, something to cling to, or something to grasp. He chose to empty himself and to become a human like us. Then, as a further sign of his love for us, he humbled himself, obediently becoming, accepting death, death on the cross. Not only a painful, but a humiliating death for our salvation. He did this, of course, out of love for each of us. St. Francis de Sales writes, Today we remember the great love that Jesus has for us. And so may we humble ourselves and open ourselves to receive the fullness of his love. And then in turn, may we learn that our lives our gifts from God, and as such, we must share our lives with others, not selfishly cling to them. And so today, let us remember each other in our <coughs> prayers and our sacrifices, and accept with joy the fact that our Lord has come to earth to suffer and to die. Let us recognize how worthy we are because of what he did. How good we are because of what he did. And how good 
one another is as well. And so let us treat each other with dignity. Let us treat each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. For after all, not only did our Lord suffer and die for me, he suffered and died for each of us. And may that same God bless each of you as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Having heard God's word and having reflected upon what that word means in our lives. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God now made, now substantial the Father, who remain all things for me. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate for the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified on the conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one unholy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pause now as we place our petitions before the throne of God. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and religious freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice, security, and peace among nations, for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, intelligence, and diplomatic services to make peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of war in Ukraine, for the withdrawal of Russia, and the restoration of justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith, and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, that during Holy Week, we will be transfigured in grace through prayer, penance, and good works, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have left the church, stopped attending Mass, or abandoned faith, that they will be moved to reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing to enter the church at Easter, to receive the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and holy Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of the construction workers and the success of our building project, we pray to the Lord. <coughs> Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will keep Christ's call and offer their lives to Him who gave His life for us, and for our parish seminarians, Tony Bennett. Mike Nugent, James Joseph, Gabriel Godet, and for Ann Whalen and Caroline Jones, postulants with the Nashville Dominicans, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound, and for our deceased, especially Joanne Calvin, mother of Patrick Calvin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls in purgatory for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions, which we offer in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty 
Father, we come before you this evening with our prayers and petitions. We ask you to hear the petitions which we have spoken aloud and all the prayers and petitions each of us holds in our hearts. We place them before you in the name of Christ Jesus, your Son. Amen. Amen. Amen.
indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks for it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
given the length of today's service, Father Saunders has mercifully restricted the number of announcements. <laughs> I'm not sure the same thing will happen with his homily tomorrow. <laughs> Our Polak collection this weekend is for the Red Cross Sioux Indian School staff by the Jesuits on Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. There's no youth group meeting this week. Please take home a copy of the bulletin with a special schedule for Holy Week, and four of our priests will be hearing confessions beginning 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday upstairs in the meeting room area. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, to Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.